This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to TSG Training. Our latest webinar today is about ITIL4 Foundation. Now, most of you, I appreciate, will know us uh, for software testing, but as you may not know, we've uh, extended our portfolio significantly recently. In doing so, we've enlisted a number of uh, key partners, one of whom is uh, Adam Saul, who's a principal trainer and owner of SysOp. They're a leading uh, ITIL provider, and Adam's going to be talking to you mostly today about um, ITIL 4. In fact, he'll be talking everything about it. You won't be listening to me. Um, so it's probably best if you mute your microphones, please, during the presentation. Um, if you want to ask a question, there is a chat facility available, and we'll open up the uh, for questions at the end of the session. So, so right now, I'm going to hand over to, to Adam, and he can tell you uh, far more than me. And uh, Adam, I'm just going to make you presenter. Great. Thank you, Bernard. Off, Thank you very much. Off, for, you, uh, off you go, Adam. Yep. Yeah. Thanks very much for this opportunity to uh, to, to share some some ITIL foundation information, really. Um, Hopefully you can, can all see my screen there. So um, yes, yeah, just uh, briefly, SysOp, we're a, a, a NITO um, best practice training organisation. So uh, perfectly placed to give you this this 30 minute introduction to to the foundation course effectively. And the the agenda that we have for you today is effectively just that it's a structure that is based around the structure of the foundation course itself. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that in a bit more detail as we get to the relevant slide. But, uh, but we're going to cover the, the key concepts of, of service management, just as a means of introducing what ITIL is, um, and moving on to some of the specific key concepts of, of ITIL 4. Um, we're going to cover these in, in a slightly different order on the slide here, but we're going to look at, uh, quite briefly, obviously this is just a uh, very brief overview session, but the four dimensions of service management, the service value system, the guiding principles, and the service value chain. And then we'll move on to ISO practices and key disciplines. And finally, we'll just conclude with what next with regards to um, the, the training, the foundation course itself, and the, um, the, the, the courses beyond that, just uh, for, for your information. Okay, so starting off with what is ITIL? Um, I don't know if, if any of you guys uh, know what, what ITIL actually stands for. Um, it, it used to be the Information Technology Infrastructure Library. Um, I say used to be because um, it has since, that, that, that the term in, Information Technology Infrastructure Library has been retired um, due to the fact that actually it's, it's no longer fit for purpose for what ITIL represents. But the term ITIL still remains because it's, it's such a strong uh, brand name, worldwide recognized approach to, to service management. And it, uh, it effectively just documents how to do service management generally. And that's, that's kind of what it's always done. We happen to be on the, the fourth iteration of ITIL. That's why we refer to it as, uh, as, as, as ITIL 4. Um, but actually the four in, in ITIL 4 uh, although it is the fourth iteration, is also to represent the fact that we happen to be in the fourth industrial revolution, which is really what this, uh, this slide is, uh, is indicating here for us, to say that we're currently at a point where technology advancements are significantly changing the way that we live our lives. So things like artificial intelligence, 3D robotics, uh, sorry, robotics, 3D printing, uh, autonomous vehicles, drones, delivery. I know some of you are probably aware that Amazon are piloting delivering parcels into your garden using drones. All looking to technology as a means to um, changing the way that we live our lives uh, and, and ultimately changing the way we, we provision our IT services, where this is this is relevant for, for us in the field of, of IT. Um, so the purpose of, of Vital 4, therefore, is to provide organizations with comprehensive guidance for the management of IT-enabled service in the digital economy. So we're recognizing that we're, we're in this, this digital economy. Uh, technology is, is always uh, developing and uh, presenting opportunities for us to um, provide better levels of service for our business, to ultimately provide better levels of service for our, um, our the business's customers. And that's really what we're looking to do here. So ITIL is um, 
It's provide comprehensive guidance, which I'll go through that in a second. Management of IT-enabled service in the digital economy. Um, it's owned by Axelos, which was a joint venture by Capita and the, the UK Cabinet Office. Um, effectively, this this ITIL uh, was 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 developed in, in the UK and owned by the government. Um, but uh, around ten years ago, they decided that they wanted to. Uh, of a private market, a private sector organisation driving the development, so capital bought into that, um, and that's enabled them to uh, for the framework to be adapted worldwide effectively, which is which is where we are today. So, ITIL generally is the, the service management approach um, for for most IT organisations across the world. Um, so, in that purpose statement, it talks about ITIL being comprehensive guidance and. It, but, the term IT infrastructure library, the library within that, is just in a specific reference to this point that um, ITIL includes a series of books, basically. It's a library of books. And this slide is just giving an indication of what those, those books are for you. So um, the starting point and the bit that's perhaps most relevant for today is that there is a book about ITIL for foundation, where it covers all of ITIL at a foundation level. Um, and that's the basis for the, the ITIL Foundation course itself. Um, but uh, but it, it provides that, that foundation for all of the, the, the subsequent, more advanced books where we go beyond that. And that's what this, this diagram is depicting there. So we have create, deliver and support, drive stakeholder value, high velocity IT, direct plan and improve, and digital and IT strategy. I'm going to talk more about the, the first four of those courses on, on my, uh, my summary slides and to give you a bit of a feel for what's actually included within them because the training courses map on perfectly to, to these courses. Digital and IT strategy is one which we're still waiting for this one to be released. So uh, when, we, uh, when we look at the, um, uh, the, the, the qualification scheme, you'll be able to see how these things fit together. So we've got this, these, pillars of, of books here. But if you see on the right hand side in the orange there, we've also got 34 practice guides. Now I don't know um, if those of you on the call are, are aware of some previous iterations of ITIL, but you've probably heard of uh, uh, processes like incident management and problem management and change management. Um, well processes have evolved into practices and I'll cover that later on, but there are 34 practice guides because there are 34 practices in ITIL 4, and this diagram is giving you a, an example of some of those. And for each of these practices, there is a practice guide, which is a shift in the way that, that this has been managed previously from Axelos. These are all available through a subscription service to the Axelos, the, the My Axelos website. Um, and I think the cost to, to subscribe to this service is £50 per year, or if you have taken an ITIL exam, then you're provided with uh, 12 months access for, for free. So the idea is if you've just done your ITIL foundation, then you will have access to these practice guides for, for 12 months for uh, future use to develop things within your organization and to also help you with your own uh, training requirements as you, as you move forward. So it's, it's a comprehensive guidance in terms of the, the, the books and the, the subscription books that are available. Um, but ITIL 4 is all about IT-enabled service in the digital economy. So let's just, just explore what we, we mean by some of those concepts within that. And two key things to pick out, service management and digital transformation. Now, I'll start off with uh, digital transformation because I'm sure all of you will have a view of what digital transformation might mean within your organisation. Uh, we tend to find that uh, the, the definition varies dramatically from organisation to organisation. For example, um, local authorities would consider digital transformation to be all about making their services available online. Um, a good case study for digital transformation is Domino's Pizza, where very different from a local authority, where uh, they put the, their success down to the fact that they shifted from a, uh, a, an emphasis of the business about providing pizza to customers to recognizing that they're an e-commerce business which just happens to sell pizza. And that, sh that very clear, obvious shift of emphasis meant that they were turning to technology to communicate with their, uh, with their customers. And that's why, if, if any of you use Domino's Pizza, you will see that uh, 
um, that the, the, the applications that the application that you use to order your pizza is it's, it's a bit of an experience in terms of giving you an update on the uh, where your, your pizza is up to in the, in the process of, uh, of being made and all of those things. Um, so by shifting that emphasis, they, they've seen how technology can, can can take the business forward. And that and over the last 10 years, they've grown significantly with, with that approach. So effectively, that's those are examples of how uh, digital transformation, i.e. the use of digital technology to enable a significant improvement in the realisation of objectives that could not feasibly have been achieved by non-digital means. So the, the, the key thing being that we're looking to uh, use technology to drive the business. And another example of how we're sort of seeing that this becoming uh, prevalent out there is that we used to lament about the fact that uh, that IT didn't have representation at the, uh, on the board of directors within organisations. Um, these days, that does still happen, but, uh, but it's very common to see sort of you know, IT directors or, or CIOs sat on the top table. But also we're seeing it uh, increasingly becoming common that the, the chief technology officer is also at that high level, just kind of further demonstrating that uh, IT and the business shouldn't be spoken about in terms of two separate silos. IT and the business effectively are the uh, should be working towards the same objectives, and therefore uh, we don't necessarily need to have this this siloed approach. So, um, if that's digital transformation, looking at the digital economy, then we we, we have uh, to look at service management. So, from from an IT services perspective, we need to provide good services to to the business. So, service management is all about a set of um, Organisational capabilities in terms of the, uh, the the skill sets, the resources, the technologies, and the infrastructure that we have available. How we structure those things to help service management enable value for customers in the form of the services that they provide. So we're looking to provide services that provide value to customers, and this is the first time that we've introduced value. But it's it's probably the most important word. In, in ITIL these days, because everything that we do should be focused on delivering value for customers. Otherwise, we, we, we shouldn't be doing it, perhaps, because it's a, it's a cost overhead that, uh, that we can perhaps do without. So, IT is at the heart of the organization. I've um, kind of covered that. Almost all services today are IT enabled. I'm not, not sure about this word, almost. I'm not, uh, when I think about this, Think of businesses, services that uh, are provided by organisations, and I can't think of any examples where IT doesn't provide some part of that. Um, but every organisation is about providing services um, and representing themselves as a service organisation. Um, more than ever, technology is is driving business. Uh, we're, we're sort of seeing that dependency on on technology is is increasing. And actually, when we sort of look at how things are evolving, and, and certainly if you guys are sort of coming from a test background, you're probably very aware of agile ways of working, which is which has presented a bit of a challenge for service management in, in recent years, um, because the business is demanding things faster, better, cheaper, and service management is trying to uh, make sure that things don't go wrong, trying to make sure that the organisation is resilient. So, so ITIL 4, really is trying to readdress that balance and look at how service management can adapt to, to agile ways of working, which is, uh, which is what the business is expecting of them. So moving on to some of the, the key concepts of the Vital 4. As I say, on this particular session, um, we've only got a very uh, limited amount of time to cover these things. So very briefly, this service value system effectively represents what, what ITIL is all about, pretty much everything that, that is covered within the, the ITIL 4 framework is included within this slide. So let me just take you through what this, this model is all about. It, so there's not much on there, but it can be uh, quite a complex concept. The starting point is that um, if you think of your, this service value system from the point of view of a, of a service provider, as a service IT service provider, then everything that you do should be in response to a demand from from the service consumers, the uh, the customers, the business. So um, when they have a requirement for a service, whether that be at a high level, a request for a new service, um, or something very low level like an end user having a, an issue with their desktop PC, then that presents demand that, that, that as a service provider we need to respond to, and ultimately. 
we're responding to that demand to facilitate value, which is the, uh, the, the point on the, on the right-hand side of this particular diagram. So, so we're saying that the stuff that's going to happen in the middle, and I'm being deliberately vague about what that stuff actually is, um, and I'll cover that in a second, but ultimately we're responding to that demand to create value for, for our service consumers. Now, the bits in the middle, I think it's easier to start from the, the, the pink hexagon there, the service value chain. I'll cover this in more detail on a, on a future slide, but this is specifically those activities that we perform in terms of converting that demand into value. And, um, and, and by activity, we literally mean everything that the, the service provider does individually or in their teams um, can be captured and represented within the service value chain. And those activities, just looking at uh, what's going around the outside of that, are both supported and constrained by governance that we have in place and the practices that we have available. Um, from a governance point of view, we're clearly talking here about um, guidelines, policies, um, giving direct, clear indications on how people should behave, how they should respond, how they should prioritise their work, for example. All of those um, those high-level governance factors influence the way that we do our activities. Likewise, the, the practices that we have available, um, so incident management has been an example of a, a practice, these are uh, resources and capabilities that we have within the organisation that help us to achieve the activities that we're doing. Um, and we'll cover our practices in more detail shortly, but I've already indicated that there are 34 practices within the ITIL framework. And uh, going around the outside, we're we have continual improvement where we're effectively looking within our organization to instill an improvement culture in everything that we do. Um, so it, it has to go around the outside of this diagram because all of our activities, all of the governance measures we have in place, all of the practices that we use should be subject to continual improvement. Likewise, the, the ITIL guiding principles, which uh, uh, I'm gonna cover on the next slide, I believe, uh, are there to, to give us guidance on how we go about doing those activities. So um, it probably will serve best to explain guiding principles by jumping into uh, the next slide where we're going to look at what those, those guiding principles are. So if, you're, if you recall, I'll just introduce these as a means of providing guidance for us to, in all the decision making that we do within the organisation. We don't it's not mandatory that we apply these guidance to, to our decision making, but the idea is that we, they're there to um, shape our thoughts process as we go through this, uh, as, as we, we develop our service improvement initiatives, as we look at developing processes and we look at responding to issues, when we look at structuring our service management capabilities, then these are seven recommended principles that we, we should be using to, to, to uh, develop our thinking. And effectively, when we go through these things, you'll see that um, it's through these principles that, that the ITIL and service management embraces approaches such as Agile and Lean and DevOps and other things that, that you may well be very familiar with. So the first one is, is focus on value, which I've kind of already given an indication that the whole ITIL 4 framework is uh, all geared towards providing value for, for stakeholders. So we're saying here within this principle, everything that we do should have a focus on the value that it's providing for stakeholders and that should help us with things like uh, prioritization um, and, uh, and understanding what, what our stakeholders requirements are. The next one, start where you are. So with this particular principle um, we're advocating the approach where there's always going to be some good within a certain situation and it's far better to build on that, uh, on that good, leverage what you currently have rather than starting from scratch. Um, the next one, progress iteratively with feedback. Say, so if you are, if you do come from an agile background, then you'll probably resonate with this one very, very well, in that the suggestion is that small incremental steps are best. It's far better to, uh, to, to better respond to customer needs by providing them with something quickly and asking the question, is this what you wanted? Uh, and through those feedback loops, we can uh, have a, a better indication of what it is that they're, that they're trying to achieve and how well we're meeting those, those particular requirements. So that very much follows a, uh, an agile approach. Collaborate and promote visibility. So collaboration is key these days, uh, whether it's uh, 
DevOps approach of development and operations working collaboratively, or whether it's working IT with the business collaboratively, or working with our partners and, and uh, strategic suppliers collaboratively. Um, collaboration is, is quite key. But the promote visibility bit here is, is an interesting one, in that this is where I relate it to um, things like uh, Kanban boards and Trello and Microsoft Teams and those things, where actually uh, collaboration tools are emerging where we're actually able to see the work that people are working on. So enabling uh, individuals to collaborate better across teams um, and the work that, that is being performed is there very, very visible. So I'm picturing um, sort of post-it notes on boards and things like that as a, as, a, as a means of promoting the visibility of the work that's being done. And that's great internally, but also it gives the means to, to sell to the business what's actually been taking place. Think and work holistically. So this, this one, quite simply, is, uh, it's, I say quite simply, it's not a simple guiding principle in practice, but uh, effectively we're saying let's consider the whole solution, not just the individual parts. We're trying to move away from siloed thinking um, and trying to understand what the bigger picture is that we're, that we're trying to achieve. Um, and that's this principle is a means of doing that. Keep it simple and practical is the next one. So eliminate the redundant activities that deliver little or no value. So with this particular one, we're saying that every single step of the activities that we perform should be adding value. And if we can optimize things, then we can look at those steps which are delivering little value and, and eliminate them from the process. And last but not least, optimize and automate as a means of using technology as a means to help with continual improvement efforts and, and reduce human interaction overall. Organizations these days should be turning to technology to to, to speed things up and automation is quite key in delivering that. Okay, moving on from the guiding principles, we're going to take a brief look at the service value chain then. So I mentioned earlier in the introduction of the service value system that it's the service value chain where we're looking at the specific activities that, that we do within an organization. And there's quite a lot within this particular concept. So I'm going to keep this quite brief, but effectively, there are six areas here. It's the, the, the six areas um, that, that we need to be uh, aware of here are engage, plan, design and transition, obtain, build and deliver and support. Ultimately, those are six categories of activities that we do to respond to demand. You'll see that the demand piece from the service value system has been carried forward to the service value chain because it's the core component, the central component of that particular system. And the value as being the, the outcome from, from the service value chain is there. But just before value, you see that uh, we have products and services. So we're saying that we're achieving the value through our products and services. And the six categories of activities that I mentioned help support the, the, the ongoing development or, or new release of those products and services, ultimately to deliver value. So it's through Engage where we intercept that demand, so things like the service desk or managing um, relationships through relationship management, um, and we, we maintain good communications with our, uh, our external stakeholders, customers, whoever that might be. We have planning activity where, where we're assessing the, the work that needs to be done, we're making some strategic decisions, we're looking at governance guidelines, we're looking at scheduling work and those types of things moving forward. And that goes a lot across the top of these activities because we should be planning at every single um, stage of, uh, of, of the delivery of something. Um, we have design and transition, which, which ah, if you're familiar with other iterations of it, so we had service design and we had service transition as two separate entities. Um, they're together because they both have the same purpose in that we're looking to make sure that when we're designing services or transitioning our products and services, that we, we take into account the quality needed, the cost and the time. Um, and that's why those two things are, are pulled together. Obtain and build, all about um, how we obtain services or how we build them. So development very much sits within the, the build aspect. We might obtain, uh, we might buy in services from somewhere else or buy in products or services. So that would fit in within that particular set of activities. Uh, deliver and support is your more traditional service operations area, so business as usual. But these, this is the actual frontline delivering services to, to consumers, and making sure that the ongoing delivery of those services is, is optimised. And at the bottom, we have the improve 
activity where we're sort of suggesting that again all across the, the, the service value chain like within plant we should be looking to identify and improve and the idea with this particular concept is if you think about your own roles you will play, you will be all be performing some aspects of the activities in these categories and by grouping that all of these activities together from a collective point of view we can optimize how we do things but perhaps significantly and more important to that is this next slide gives you a bit of a very visual um, idea of so why do we categorize them in that way well through the service value chain we can now introduce value streams and this particular slide gives you an example of a value stream when we're developing a new service so um, i'm not going to go through the specific detail of it but just to give you a, bit, a quick visual to say by understanding that the value stream involves different types of activity going through the service value chain then we can then look at that value stream try and identify who's involved where and when through that through each of those particular stages how can we optimize the way that we do things what are the things that we need to be thinking about and that enables us ultimately to provide a better level of service so vital 4 introduces value streams for, for the first time um, and effectively it's the value streams that uh, that, that, that represent the, 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 the things that our products and services are providing to our service consumers and how we support those ultimately. Okay, so moving on to another concept, the four dimensions of service management. And I've just introduced value streams. Um, this is a, a good example to say, well, the four dimensions of service management could be used as a way of optimizing your, how you use value streams because uh, for every value stream, you might want to be thinking about who is involved from an organization's and people perspective, and what their roles and responsibilities are, how they communicate and all of those things. So this concept will, will help improve things by enabling you to, to think about this, taking this holistic view to service management by thinking about these four key areas. Organizations and people being, being one of them. Information and technology, so what knowledge do we have available to help us? What information do we need? What technologies do we have at our disposal? All of those things contribute to um, uh, how we can improve our value streams from an information technology perspective. Uh, number three, partners and suppliers. So which third party organizations do we work with for the, the delivery of our products and services and what part do they need to play through, through the value streams? And then the value streams themselves and the specific processes. So incident management is, is a practice I'm going, to, I'm going to talk shortly, but there is still an incident management process. Um, but it's different from a value stream because a value stream is, is the end-to-end -end delivery of something across multiple levels of the organization using different practices, uh, whereas the process is very specific to a one particular practice. So we'll, we'll cover that shortly. Going around the outside of this particular concept is the external factors. Um, and these, this is just basically to represent that there are external things that impact the way we do our service management. And right now we've got a great example that with the coronavirus, we're all having to adapt and that's going to change the way that we deliver our products and services, ultimately having a knock-on effect on the value that we can provide to our organisation and it needs to be managed. So that's really what's, uh, what's represented by those, uh, those things going around the outside. Okay, moving on to ISO 4 practices then. So I've kind of covered them, uh, let's give you a bit of an example, incident management being one. Um, there's uh, 34 of them, I'm not gonna go into any of them in, in any detail, but just to sort of say that uh, the ISO 4 breaks them into three categories of general management, service management, and technical management practices, which is just really about where the best practice guidance originates from. Is it a specific IT service management practice or is it something that originates from somewhere else? Um, the key thing just to mention on this slide is the, the colour coding, really. Um, the, those practices which are in the darker shade of blue are the ones which you cover in detail on the ITIL 4 Foundation course. Um, those which are in the mid shade of blue are those which we just cover the purpose. We just introduce them, but we really just talk about why they're there rather than, uh, rather than going into any specific detail. And from an ISO 4 foundation point of view, all of the ones in the lightest blue colour, lightest blue shade, we don't cover at all. So really it's just 15 practices that we cover on, on ISO 4 foundation and seven of those we go into uh, much more detail than, um, than the others. 
Okay, so that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour of, of, of ITIL4. There's, there's a lot to it, but that kind of gives you a flavour for the, the concepts that are within there. Uh, this is the, the ITIL4 certification scheme. So, um, as I say, we're just talking about ITIL Foundation, really, although everything that I've just talked about is covered in, in the other books. Um, if you remember the comprehensive guidance slide that I had where it talks about the, the books in the framework, uh, this maps on perfectly to that. So. The ITIL, uh, ITIL Foundation course is the, the, the starting point. It's, yeah, I'll cover the detail of that course in a second. Um, but the other courses above that go into specific areas of, uh, of the ITIL framework, uh, covering it from different perspectives. And then I've got slides which, which give uh, an indication of what those areas are in coming up on the next few slides. Um, but there are, after foundation, there are effectively two qualifications that you can aim for ITIL Managing Professional which uh, this slide is demonstrating the foundation and the four courses uh, above that contribute towards the ITIL Managing Professional qualification. So you would need five courses to, to become an ITIL Managing Professional. The ITIL Strategic Leader still needs the ITIL Foundation as a prerequisite, but we've also we've only got two courses that we need to become an ITIL Strategic Leader. And you can see that the course Direct Plan and Improve is deliberately on there twice because it contributes to, to both streams. If you hold the ITIL Managing Professional and the ITIL Strategic Leader, then you meet the prerequisites to go on and uh, try and become an ITIL Master, which is uh, details of this one haven't been announced yet, but it's likely to be a sort of dissertation exercise where you, uh, you demonstrate your experience in, in a particular area of service management. And one thing I've not mentioned just down the side there is the Managing Professional Transition course. This is for those people who have already got ITIL expert qualification um, or one step below that, i.e. if you've got 17 credits on the old scheme, then you can use the Managing Professional Transition course to bypass those four courses and foundation and uh, convert your qualification to the ITIL Managing Professional for ITIL 4. I'm sure some of you may have questions on this at the uh, at the end of this particular session, but uh, I'll address them at the uh, at the end to see what we get. Um, so the ITIL 4 Foundation course, it's a three-day course. It can be delivered as, as two days on request. There's a lot of information to cover, so we recommend it being three days. Um, and it covers basically everything that's on this slide here. Key concepts of service management, the key concepts of ITIL that I've already covered today, and introduction to the ITIL practices where we go into a fair bit of detail. Um, the, just in terms of exam weighting, 24 of the 40 marks are all allocated towards the introduction to ITIL practices. So it gives you a flavour that actually, although there are three sections, the vast majority of the course is focused on um, section three. Uh, and the exam, the exam detail there, 60 minute exam, multiple choice. If you've done an ITIL foundation exam before, uh, it's very similar to, uh, to, to what you may have experienced in the past. And very briefly, just having a look at the, the more advanced modules that are available. So the ITIL4 specialist create, deliver and support. Again, there's a lot on this slide, but really it's just demonstrating that um, the, this, the, the diagram on the left where you've got a square around obtain, build, design and transition, deliver and support. Effectively, it's this course which looks at the, 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 the usual typical IT operational stuff, looking at uh, from the development to the operations life cycle, which is why it's create, deliver and support. Um, and it looks specifically at two examples of value stream, one of a new service and the practices that are involved in delivering that, and one for restoring a live service and those practices involved with uh, restoring the live service. So um, if, you're, if you're, it, you operate in an area of, sort of operational stuff where you've got service that's into the problem or of relevance to you, then you might want to look at this course as uh, the next one beyond foundation. The next one, ITIL4 Specialist Drive Stakeholder Value. This looks at the customer journey um, and goes through each step of the customer journey in providing products and services, right from exploring what opportunities there are from a business engagement point of view, all the way through to delivering and realizing the value from the services that, uh, that the, customers, the service consumers take from, from the service provider. And again, a lot, lot more to this, but specifically it breaks down each of those individual sections. And again, it covers the ITIL practices that are irrelevant at, uh, 
each of those particular stages. High velocity IT is one where it's effectively, I have to refer to it as agile service management, it's actually more than that. High velocity means an organization is uh, got fast development, they've got following lead principles, agile principles, uh, continuous delivery, things like that, whilst maintaining a resilient infrastructure. And that's what this, this particular course is all about. So it looks at all of, of, of ITIL4, uh, looks at it from the point of view of, a, of an agile way of working, a high velocity perspective. So this, this is kind of a, a course which is a bit specialist, really. It focuses on um, those areas that, uh, that are most relevant for organisations who are operating in this way. And then there's the direct plan and improve strategies course. This is the one that, that contributes to both managing professional and the strategic leader qualification. Um, and this one quite simply looks at plan and improve, but, but it's all those things around how we structure our capabilities, how we do stakeholder management, communication, organizational change management, and those, those aspects, governance and risk and compliance, all of those factors which, which shape the way that we deliver our services. That's what you would get on this particular course. Okay, um, that's end of, of, of my particular session. Um, I'm not sure Bernard will jump back in again in a second. Uh, just to say that uh, thank you for, for your time. Um, I'm sure some of you may have some questions. I'm happy to take them from the floor. I'm happy to have a look at the chat window to see if there is anything specifically within that. Uh, So, uh, I'm just picking up on the on the chat facility here. Um, so, apologies if the, the sound was a, a bit off. Um, didn't realise that that was the issue. I missed on the chat to say that. Uh, so, one of the questions in, are these qualifications all new? Um, all of the qualifications are new. So, if anybody has a existing ITIL qualification, unless you have... 17 credits or more, which effectively means that you, you will have chopped off maybe four or five of the ITIL courses from previous iterations. Um, then if you have done that, then you can just look at the Managing Professional Transition. But the whole qualification scheme has changed. The whole books have been rewritten, so everything is new. Any further questions? Thanks, Adam. That's all very. Uh... I've, got, I've got a good question here, actually. Bernd, let me just address this one. Why bring these new qualifications it. in it now? Is it purely because of the fourth revision? It is certainly because of the, the, the fourth revision. Um, I, I didn't cover this in my presentation, but uh, it was, I think, ITIL version three was released more than 10 years ago. Um, and met much of the, the guidance that was provided by there. For example, cloud computing was mentioned in ITIL version three, but uh, um, these days, obviously, every organization or nearly every organization is dependent on some sort of cloud, uh, cloud uh, technology infrastructure. So it needed to be updated for that particular reason. Also, uh, we were seeing that um, organizations, ITIL was developing a, a bad name in some organizations because the perception was that it didn't support an agile way of working. So the best practice guidance needed to be updated. It has been updated significantly, um, and I think it is appropriate that the qualification scheme has been updated to reflect that. Okay, I didn't... Uh, Great. Golf, carry on. Yeah, so one more question. Are these qualifications only given by yourselves via TSG? Uh, this, this is a worldwide framework. It's a worldwide available qualification scheme. There are other organisations that offer them. Uh, I'd like to say they don't offer it as well as us, but, uh, but yeah, there, there, there are other routes to do this. And the courses um, are available, uh, e-learning, uh, classroom-based courses, and, uh, and virtually too. Okay, all done. Yeah, thanks, okay, thank you. Much. Thanks, Adam, that, that's great. Thanks very much indeed. Um, and thanks to you for attending. Uh, available to you, we'll make a copy of the presentation available recording the webinar. And as you can see, the next course with Adam, which you can uh, book through us, they're available in June, July, and September. 
I guess there's no more questions unless I'll unmute everybody's mics uh, just to see if anybody wants to say anything. Everyone's unmuted, so I'm guessing not. So all that remains is to thank Adam for his time. Thank you for your attending, and uh, we look forward to seeing you for your uh, you know, your actual courses in the future. Um, as you know, yeah, you can make for us. Yeah, and please call for all inquiries. That's great. Cheers, all. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.